Hello and welcome to the Anyone Can Play Guitar podcast, which gives you, the listener, a series of hints and pointers on your journey as a musical artist, providing you with interviews from those in the music industry, along with our own experiences. Ben and James shine some light on the many pitfalls and opportunities that being a musician has to offer. Last week we had part one with Paul Langley, where we covered all things tour management, including the importance of the role, what it involves, and who can do it. This week we stay with Paul for a change in direction, moving on to photography. Here we cover the importance of a good photo, why to use a professional, and what musicians should consider. Welcome to episode 22 with me James and him, Ben. So are are you fully refreshed and recovered? Oh, ready for part two. Part two, week two. Still at the Clooney. Yes, I think so. Good. So, how does this differ? How does this differ from week one? Well, radically, in in so much that all of our other part two part yeah. episodes have been a follow on mm-hmm. in terms of the same conversation just runs on over a, a number yeah. of topics. Whereas this isn't radically different in the sense it's still with Paul, mm-hmm. but it is in the sense of the first part we were talking specifically. Yes. About his role as a tour manager. This is exclusively about him being a photographer. Yes. Which at the time when I met him, when we met him, I did not know. No, we did not. No. So, um. Multi talented guy. Yeah. And we'll get into it a lot about what he does. Good. (laughs) Yeah, about what he does and all that, but he just does it basically for himself more than anything. I'll take pictures of you. He says, I'll take pictures of you if I want to. Yeah. It's not about the money. And if you want them to. Yes, of course, yes. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, if he's at a gig, you might want to take a picture. Yeah. Well, but, um, but as in professionally, yes. Yeah. Well, he, he does it because it's a passion, a hobby. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And he's still got a good resume of people he's photographed. Mm-hmm. He's got the Gallagher's on there, the Roses on there. So lots of stories about that side of it. But really, similar to the tour manager stuff of why you would do it and the benefits of, and a little bit of insight in, into how you would do it, and the pitfalls you would people often fall into, yeah. and a live example. Well, yes, that is the crux of this episode. I guess it's the the why, the how, what's the point, well, yeah. things to think about. Uh, yeah, it's, and the how is a good bit as well, which we'll get onto in more detail later. But why spend so much money, or why not spend so much money? How can you do it better, hmm. um, especially? For up and coming bands who might not have the budget for photography, for someone like Paul, well, well can you afford not to have a good photo? We'll find out. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, enjoy part two of Paul and his enthusiastic chat about photography. Excellent. So yes, we're moving to photography. Photography then. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier at the start that you got into snapping. <laughs> yeah, um, I did. Yeah, yeah, terribly, terribly. Um, terribly so, damaged. how do you go about getting? Do you, do you do jobs for people photography no, wise? No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm, I will only shoot. I have, and all my life I've had the same thing. I'll only take pictures, make music, and do whatever if I like it. If right. I want, if I really like it, I'll do. Like, and it goes back to the band management as well. And I say this, to, like to Mary Hell. Let's say, let's say Mary Hell. They've got a front cover there. And uh, just for the listeners, great mate. Um, it's bury me naked, and there isn't. There's like, there's not one picture of the band on there, so you don't actually know what they look like. It just looks quite iffy. Um, but if you have to, if you're in the band and you're starting off, and you want you want to look good, you want to capture that sort of million words in one picture job, is get a decent picture done of your band. Mm-hmm. You know, rehearsing live shots. You know, even f- do. <laughs> I heard that brilliant one with, uh, is it the Sherlock's who photoshopped themselves up the bill at Why Not? Yeah, that's right. So yeah. they were in fourth and they went, oh, they just jumped a second with the Amazon. So well, you're terrible anyway. You know, don't worry, you're getting the same money. You know, don't big yourself up, let somebody else do it for you. So you need to, so, so I think the pictures are, are fantastically important as an image for your band. You know, if you look at like, one of, my, one of the bands who Mark and I listen to is Sleaford Mods. You know, oh yeah, yeah. And, and I love them. I think they're great. You know, they look terrible, but uh, but and the, and they sound terrible, but they're just brilliant. You know, <laughs> That's exactly I love them. What they are, yeah. TCR is a great track. You know, talk show racing. Um, it's dead funny and and it's really really good. But they look good. Yeah. You know, they take a picture 
of them. And that's what I've not taken, I've not shot the sleeve of Modge yet, but I will do. Um, they're on my hit list to do because I really want to take a picture of them because I think I can get a, 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 a good image for them. Um, but, uh, but that goes back to the whole inner band. You know, I've got a cousin who's in a band called Low Rise and, and they've got a little record deal. And they've got, they're using the camera phone pictures as like main PR shots. So this was, this was one of the things that I was going to um, ask because I imagine there'll be loads of reasons why you wouldn't want to just take your phone out your pocket and use that. Yeah. Because obviously you've got the technology. There's Absolutely. Good quality cameras on these things Brilliant. these days. But even from the very small amount of knowledge I have on all things photography, mm-hmm. there's all sorts about what's in the background, foreground, what you know, mm-hmm. blah blah yeah. blah, all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so why for any listener who's out there, why would they want to go to someone? more professional or someone who has a clue about photography right. rather than a DIY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DIY is great because um, if you do it on your iPhone or uh, other phones are available, .com, <laughs> you can, you generally, you, you generally struggle with editing. So if you wanted a particular black and white shot, then you, 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 you can get a black and white shot on any other phone. But what they do, they put contrast on it, you, you, you make it, shine you make it look good you make it look like it's just come out of a magazine mm. you know like that. so so and then that gives you the profession it gives you the air of professionality of that band mm. you know so so for instance when i'm doing a photo shoot like i, I did um i, I shot a uh liam at the the ritz in manchester the gig after the bombing in manchester so oh, it's yeah. dead emotional i mean really emotional yeah, yeah. and he lit 22 candles going down the front he walked mm. out on stage went into the front of the stage and the crowd are pouring him and this and he's loving it but it was really emotional for him, and he lit twenty-two candles, and then and then he come back, and so it was so emotionally charged, and yet all these kids were like with the camera phones and taking pictures. Now they can take a picture throughout all the gig. I get two songs, no flash, and you get out. So I've got to get my I've got to get my money's worth in literally one hundred and twenty seconds. You know, because because you can't be. There's no point in me just pr- pressing burst. Mm. You know, on a, on a, on a camera. Uh, because nine times out of ten, you're probably going to get one out of sixty shots, and that's going to be hard because because you know, let's take Liam out of it because he doesn't move that much. But if you if you're talking like stereophonics or you're talking, um, you know, like a, a, like a punk band, like the art, a punkish, like the Arctic Monkeys, you move around and this that and the other, mm. and it's all very very sort of aggressive. You you, you kind of can't burst because it's moving, so it's all yeah. blurred. So you really have to pick your shot, and you might only get two or three shots out of two songs mm. but the kids in the front are sat there like that going you know video on it with their iPhone and then pulling back and going checking it and going ah oh, I'll delete it and do it again mm-hmm. you know by that time we've gone mm. you know so we've missed our chance I've been to gigs where I've been there and I've, and I've, I've got my camera ready I've got a couple of cameras my couple of Nikons and whatever and, I, and I'm right I'm lining it up I'm talking to sort of other photographer dude who's working for something else and I'm going right so uh, so you know what are you going to do man and he's going well you know I'm just waiting for this particular part of the song and I'm going to snap it and then he, the, the guy the artist doesn't do that song so he's going oh can't do it I, I was waiting all the time Right, so, and I just go on and say, well, I'm just taking it for whatever, mate, you know, I'm just going to do what, I'll just stop, I don't have to take anything, I'll just take that one shot, and I'll go, oh, that's it, bingo, and I'm done, I walk off, and the guy's in the pit going, where are you going? Just, done, there's my shot, I've got it, have a look, you know, and then I send it off, I file it, I send it off to the, the agency in London, and they'll put it in music magazines or red tops or online or whatever. So, um, so yeah, so, so that's, that's the size of it, really, so the iPhone is a, is a pain in the ass, but it's, it's great for the punters. Because mm. they can do whatever they want, and you do get some brilliant footage, you know. And it does go; some of the footage goes really viral. But um, you know, but they don't make a four thousand pound camera, you know. Uh, so it's it, uh, uh, so it's not as bad as an iPhone, you know. Yeah. So it, I like what you said though, because if if I go on a, a typical Instagram feed or whatever, I think you can tell that it's been taken yeah. off a phone as opposed to. Absolutely, the image that's yeah, yeah, being yeah. properly professional. Yeah, today. you can do it on my Instagram at the Paul Langley. Um, I've got a couple of pictures where um, I've taken one with the phone of my dog, or where I've been on holiday taking a snap, and then deliberately side by side is a picture where I've taken of uh, Ian Brown or Manny or whoever, and I might have taken a picture of one person and then another person, but you can really tell. 
because mm. the colours are so much vibrant and it's got a sheen on it, it's got a sparkle yeah. to it. And this one on your iPhone, which are great cameras, and the Samsung, um, and, but I think the Sony ones are the better ones because they use a different lens. Um, you can really tell what's been shot on a camera phone and what's been shot on a, on a professional, or even a, even a bridge camera, even a semi-professional, even a compact camera, mm. you know, because it gives you that editing. Yeah. Um, but again, it goes back to it's so important, you know, uh, for, for bands to have that. You should get, a, get your mate to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's what we, we had um, at the start, a friend of ours was doing photography at uni. Yeah. And she wanted to focus on music and bands, so we, she was kind of like a, yeah. a, a nice match. And then Kev, I mentioned him before, mm. he just liked us and liked photography, but he loved a blurry picture. <laughs> but every now and again, he would get, he would get one. Yeah. And he did the front cover of our first one, two, three, four EPs. Maybe. Wow. I, I, I don't know. I always felt a bit odd when we were getting our photos taken. Not so much if it was live, fair, mm-hmm. fair enough. But, you know, to stand around. There was a wasted night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, a yeah, wasted yeah, night yeah, yeah, in the countryside yeah. where <laughs> Kev was trying his best. And then we were really? like, oh, we were like, nah, I'm just really? going to look like an arse here if I try and do a... A specific pose or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, See, that's another thing. It depends how you want to come across. Mm. If you look at the Who pictures, um, there's always one of them smiling or smirking. You know, there's never sort of dead serious. Yeah. You know, and, and and I storyboard everything out. So I'll sit with. Well, the band this is go, where I was going. This is my go. next one, right? What so, do you think? So how, how do you does want to how does that process work? Like, so if you take this, it's not live. Yeah, you've got the, studio, you've got the band, right. whether it's in a studio or whatever. How does it go from right? We're going to do some photos. Yeah. To then get to the end point, what what does that process look like? Talking from... to the artist, listening to the music. Um, when you talk to him, you ask him, "How do you want to come across? Do you want to be a bit moody? Do you want a bit? What is the band about? Is it a f- fun band, or is it like a moody, serious, in, you know, indie rock band or whatever? Right. If it's indie rock, stick you out, stick in front of Manchester Cathedral, something industrial, something concrete. Mm. You know, go black and white, go sepia or whatever, and then you know, take a stop. Or ask the band, "Have you seen a picture that you really like of your favourite artist? Do you, mm. want to, do you want me to put you in that shot?" And then he can build it up around that, you know. Eric Watson, who's a, who's a Geordie lad, he's dead, passed away now. Um, he um, worked with the Pet Shop Boys for like all the career. And he did the very famous one where Chris Lowe and Neil Tennant, um, it's done a stripy t shirt for Suburbia. And that's a brilliant shot, that's a stage shot. But on the, the B side of that, there's, there's Chris, stu- uh, Neil Tennant's stu- his arms folded, and Chris Lowe's punching him in the face, but it's blurred. So he's, he's blurred. But the, the image is like that, so you get like the, the 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 how can I put it? Chris Lowe's very much in, you know into electronics, and Neil Tennant's very sort of focused and you know very sort of down the level. So you kind of get that within that particular picture. So mm. just in that shot, you kind of know what the band's about. Mm. And the same with like you know, what Morning Glory Oasis. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, so you can kind of get what they're all about. You know, Smith's, you know the, Smith's, the Smith's, Smith's, Smith's one. Um, you know, I've got my the jacket there. And it's got Salford Lads Club, and that's yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. most. And, and I love yeah. Salford Lads Club. And, and I'll, I'll say to a band, you know, I was working with a band a couple of weeks ago, and I said to him, I said, what do you want to look like? Oh, I want to look like Smith. I said, well, you're not going to look like Smith. Because, <laughs> yeah. because every band on the What's Look Like Smith gets his picture taken outside Salford Lads Club. Mm. You know, don't, don't conform, don't, just don't rip anybody off, but be sympathetic to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there is that sort of uh, that angle to it. Well, I like that, that, that notion of storyboarding things out, actually. Yeah, get yeah, some yeah, thought yeah. about it, because, yeah, that... Um, a lot of bands, yeah, you know, would typically oh, we want that shot that everyone does, but then you just surely another band yeah. that looks the same as all. I spent four ones. days storyboarding back. If somebody, if you come up to me and said, "Paul, do us a favour amongst but I need you to do some pictures of me." Right, okay. So I'll ask you loads of questions. I'll storyboard it and I'll go. What do you think? They'll just be line drawings, you know. And I'm a crap drawer, you know. I'll I'll, I'll give it my dog to do, and and <laughs> and, uh, and hi, Dusty, and um, and and I'll have like uh, I saw a brilliant shot of uh, Keith Moon, and Keith Moon's lean. He's got the full kit, and and there's a kid who's a uh, uh, James. He's wearing a, a baseball cap, and he said, "Oh, make me look like it. I want, I want to be quite you know, serious and moody." And I went, "I went fine." So so what we'll do? We'll get you in front of a kit. And and uh, just just in between the in between the hi hat, the symbol and the snare, just rest on the snare and just look through and just look straight down the lens and just don't put any emotion in it. Look down the lens, right? And then put your sticks in your hand and just we'll do that. And he goes, oh, that might, that might not work. And I said, well, it worked for Keith Moon. <laughs> so you know, and it, and it worked. He loved it, you mm-hmm. know. And there's yeah. another guy who's resting on his microphone, who's looking nonchalant in the camera. And these were a serious indie band. 
And so you're just thinking, well, you know, sometimes you can, you know, be a bit sympathetic to the original picture, and sometimes you can be a bit more outlandish, you know. Mm. So you can say, listen, right, I want you all lined up Beatles style, and then, but one of you smiles. Mm. You know, put a bit of fun into it. I mean, fun, you know, I mean, just don't make it as serious as you want. You can be a black background, um, white t shirts, black baseball caps, one of you turn away and and face the opposite way, so I'll get the back of your head. You know, so there's, and that's just storyboarding it out and talking to the band and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's each to their own. Cool. Mm. So, Does <clears throat> it depend on where the photo is going to go, what it's going to be used for? Absolutely. Like storyboard. Yeah, if, it's, if, if you story, if I'm, I work with a band called the Waikiki Operators, who are a small band in Manchester. Um, they do everything themselves, a very good band, you know. Uh, I, I hope they do get somewhere and I spent a week with them and we was in two studios and I had a, like a three camera set up so artist is right in front of me two cameras there me in the middle and I'm firing remotely and so I've got different angles and whatnot and I said to him what do you think and I went yeah they're really good then and I said what are you using it for oh we might use it for, a, for a, our website right okay so I immediately know what you want so you want to do it it's got to look pretty good is it for Facebook no so let's be a little bit more serious. If it's for Facebook, you can start kind of get away with being a bit more jokey more because it's on social media and the resolution doesn't have to be that great. Bigger the resolution, slower it takes to upload and it's, it doesn't make any difference. Or you're tweeting it. Um, but there was, with that particular band, there was, I got a shot of the band and I just said, just put your hands down, just, just, look, just look at the camera, look bored. And as I shot it, I got a little reflection and it, it mirrored the shot above. So it was a complete fluke. And I looked back at the camera and I went, that's a bit shit. And I, and I said to him, what do you think of that? And I went, oh, that's brilliant. Did he mean to do it? Uh, of course I did, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Brilliant. That's what you're not paying me for. Um, and then one of them was wearing trainers and I went, I went right, I'm going to lie on the floor. Right, kick me in the face with your trainers on. They had a pair of Adidas trainers. And uh, so, so he stood above me and he's doing that. And I went, right, stop. And I got him. And I got the shoe, and it was a, it was in it was black and yellow, and I dropped all the colour, and I just had the yellow stripes on him, and he's got his face really angry, and he's looking up, and and he said that's so out of character, and I went brilliant, that I've got it, you know, don't be in character, be completely out of character, um, don't conform, so um, so that really worked, so it does matter if you're doing stuff for press, if you're doing stuff for um, uh, like a, you know a journal or a website, and it does it does kind of matter. All right. You mentioned there about working with bands and stuff, and the two two things we often often ask about certain elements of the music industry. What sort of things should a band do to get the best out of you? Mm. But also, what what does a, what do what do bands do that really get on your wick, get on your nerves? Um, that, like they don't. Uh, one of the things that annoy me with bands, they don't have a clue. They don't do any research. Just mm. take pictures. Yeah, but what of? Where? Why? You know. Just the basics, really. You know, if I'm like, I'll, I'll say to, uh, I'll say to my wife, we'll go on holiday, and I'll say, uh, I'll, I'll say, right, let's say, let's get a picture here, and she'll go, what like this? And I'll spend ten minutes just saying, no, listen, <laughs> just there. I want this background. I want you there. You know, or maybe to the side, or maybe up. I don't know. You know, um, and that's and, and bands don't come prepared. You know, mm. if if you want, if you pay me to take pictures, and I've got quite a strong resume, uh, I, so so you are handing over a small amount of cash, you know, um, and then you say, well, that's your job. No, it's not my job because I don't know you. You know, <laughs> you tell me what you want and to the best of my ability, I will get you what, what I think you should be getting. So we may go on location in Manchester if you're an indie band. We may go into a park, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're like uh, with fine lines and want like, loads of trees and flowers and this and that. You know, or you can do whatever, but give me an idea, you know. I'm only as good as the ideas you give me because to me, it's just, right, I'll just put you against that wall and shoot you there and you've got a portrait shot. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a bass player, um, same band, Waikiki Operators, he said to, I said to him, uh, one of the bass players, uh, uh, he's only a short guy, but he, but he has a massive, massive bass guitar, which is bigger than him. Mm-hmm. And I said, pick that up, right, and knock me in the face with it. Just run at me. And he goes, why? And I said, just do it. And I got him, he's running at me and I'm taking... And I've got him, just one out of 50 shots, where he's just about to throw the axe. And he went, oh, brilliant, can we use that? And I went, no, absolutely no way, because that's a brilliant shot and that won't do it justice. Where you're going to put it will not do it justice. Use this one. So I've saved that for when the band gets signed, they can go, there you go, that's the shot you can have. You mm. know what I mean? So you, so you sort of, 
again, you, the tour managing thing, you're sort of holding things back for the greater good. Mm. If they don't do anything, and you go, oh, there you go, there's a shot, you have it, and well. Um, but it does go hand in hand. Depends where it depends where it's going to go, and also um, how much input the band have into the into the actual process. Mm. So, so the types of research a band should be doing, or the things that they should be coming to the table with. Mm. From what, if I'm just replaying a bit of what you said, there's there's a bit of right. Why am I, Why do I want these photos in the yeah. first place? Where am I going to put them? What am I going to use them for? Who am I going to send them mm. to? What format size? Do I need them for? Yeah, what, the for, what output is it? For, is it for a poster? Yeah, you know, is it is it for um, is it for your own PR? Uh, you know, again, is it Facebook? If it's you know whatever, um, and then you know if 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 I can impart any advice, you just give the photographer as much clue as you can. What other reasons might someone want? It? Aside from the usual traditional, I'm going to put it on social media. Yeah, I'm going to have a poster. What what, what other? Reasons might have found one for to get gigs. You know, you can get gigs off it. You know, if you look good, they're going to go. Oh, that's nice. Your music's after. You know, it look pretty good actually. Easy. You know, I'm a very straight guy, but this lead singer can be quite cute. He can be quite a good looking kid, and you'll go. Actually, you know what? I can fit them with this band here and the girl band and this and this. So the mm-hmm. batch of Bill might work, and it sound half decent. Right. I can kind of get it. You know, doing that. Um, that's where we went wrong James yeah you were <laughs> <laughs> with no due right. respect whatsoever I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh. But, but yeah so, so, so you can do it for a number of reasons but the main thing it really is is PR mm. um, yeah. yeah makes sense cool I'm a bit conscious of time though we've been going quite a while so Absolutely. Um, have you got anything else for photography because mm-hmm. I've got one last question because you've spoke a lot there and you've mentioned loads and loads of bands ah. this is quite a philosophical question happened so what of all the great artists that you've come across, whether it's the Gallagher's, Primal Scream, Doves, what have they all got in common? Attitude. Yeah? They've all got attitude. They all... They all and good can I be frank? Yeah, yeah. They don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. They don't care. They're just them. They're not putting any front, any, any, anything on them. They're just... No filters. It's just them. Yeah. You know, when I take a picture of... I'll show you a picture after uh, uh, www.dpaulangley.com. Um, uh, if you, I'll show you a picture of. Uh, I'll show you two pictures. One of Liam and there's one of Noel, right? And now every time, every time I go and take a picture, because I know them and help, knowing the artist is so important. I'll, there's a little example with Manny. Manny, um, when he played at the Etihad a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and Manny walks on and he's a great. He's one of my favourite players. There's him and Oki and John Elwood, some team of great bass players. Martin Walsh in Spinal Street, four of my great bass players. And, and McCartney, um, who's a piss poor six. So anyway, <laughs> uh, well, I'm joking, Paul. Um, so so Manny walks on, he's dead tight, and, and you know it's like sixty thousand people waiting, baying for the first gig of Stone Roses yeah, yeah. at the Etihad. It's like going mad, and it's like bottles of whatever being thrown over, and his camera phones going off, and flashes here, and flashes there, right? And Manny walks on stage, and he's absolutely panning himself. And he walks on, he's dead tight, his shoulders are together, and he's he's all really white knuckle in his guitar and whatnot, and then. He, he comes on and they start playing the plant step and what I'll be adored and whatnot and then and then you can see him really really sort of concentrate really tight and open and whatnot and then then I'm sat I'm stood in the front with a brilliant t-shirt company joeandco.com and Joe has this Northern Couture t-shirt and I told him before a couple of weeks before I said man Gary I'm going to wear a Northern Couture t-shirt on so when you see me I'm there so I'm kind of your conduit so I'm your comfort blanket so, so he comes on and he, and he starts playing. Then he sees me and he, he's, he's in shoulders drop and he's got a little bit of a smirk, right? And I've not got my camera by this part and I've only got two songs. And I'm halfway through the first song and, and it's like, camera phone's going off everywhere and loads of photographers in front of me sort of, you know, taking, trying to get the best shot. And man is just looking straight at me, right? And he's doing this, he's playing his bass, drops his shoulders, right? And I mouth to him, what are you doing up there? And he, and he just turns on and does a massive <laughs> smile. And that's a gift. So he's gifted me a picture. And, he, and so I do that, I go... Ch-ch-ch. I only took six shots that night. And all six nailed out of, out of three songs. Out of two songs, sorry. Um, every time you take a picture of Noel, he'll point at you. So he'll see me in the crowd and he'll, he'll, sort of, he'll just point at me like that. And Liam, he sort of not, he does that, Liam, and sort of tips his head back, and he'll go, all right, man. And he'll give me a shot, and I'll, I will show you the shots. As I said, it's on my Instagram, at the Paul Um But you'll see, you'll see a great shot of uh, Liam, where he's looking at me direct, he's sort of giving me the eye, really horrible bastard. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but, but uh, you know, he's sort of, he's really in the zone. Mm. And it's like that picture 
uh, it might not sell any albums, but it'll tell you a lot about it. You know, and the one yeah. in Manning, um because I do all my pictures, I don't make any money off. Right. I I give everything away to uh, uh, Tinnitus. The G T oh, okay. uh, Tinnitus G B, which is which is my favourite charity, and so so I've never made a penny out of uh, photography because everything I've got I frame and I uh, I, I give it away. Um, so with with things like with the, with the major artists and they are major artists, I hate to say that, but yeah, um, they give you something, mm-hmm. and you get to know them that little bit better. You know, yeah. like when like I took a shot and Mark is he's playing at the convent. And he's, he's playing his drums and he just stops and he's just laughing. And, and I'm just taking, I'm just like, you know, pressing my camera, not even looking at it. And he look, he's just like shaking his head at me. And, he, and, and I went, I said, what are you doing? He goes, you stopped the set. You know, he's, he's doing whatever. Uh, and he stops the set in, uh, in sound check. And he said, you, you're taking pictures of me, not even looking at me. And I went, oh, I don't need to, do I? Just autofocus. Yeah, I'm not going to use them. Anyway, it turned out that was a great shot. <laughs> you know? but, uh, but yeah, so, so it is, know your artist. Um, but yeah, yeah, that makes what sense. Achieve, I was yeah. watching something on Netflix the other day. There's a series called I think Creative or something. They look at various different people who are like the top of their game mm. in different sort of um, industries. So there's the guy who created the Nike Air Jordans, and yeah, like, and went through that. There was someone who does build sets like on stage for live, like for the Beyonces and the mm. role players of, of the world. And then there was one guy's photographer, um, and he's photographed like big world leaders yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah, yeah. old US presidents all the rest of it yeah. and he said a big part of when the person comes into their office he'll spend a big chunk of the time is just sitting down talking and getting Absolutely. some stories getting some because he says the, the actual shot that he then gets mm. is massively different compared to if he just sat them down and started yeah, uh, yeah. one away. of my favourite shots I ever took and it's on my Facebook uh, page uh, is of an old dude called C6 Steve. So I was I was at a festival called Lounge on the Farm and Steve was right in front of me and he was talking to a lot of people and I was at the back and I had my long lens uh, and I was just taking pictures of him. But one thing I did do was I spoke to his management, his tour manager, and I said, I am Paul Langley, I work for Camera Press in, uh, in London and I've also got um, a deal with Clash Music, great magazine. Um, uh, and uh, do you mind if I take some pictures of Steve candidly? And he goes, no, I'll come, you know, come and meet him. So I went over. I said, hi, hey, Steve, you're all right. So we've got a mutual friend. He's, he's our kid who's on Sony. And you're on Sony. And this and he goes, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, so, so I said, do you mind if I take some pictures? And I said, I'd be really out of your way. You won't even notice me. So I've got a shot and it's on my Facebook page. And, and it's just him just looking at me like, just t- head to the side, just looking down to the camera as if he doesn't really care. And that's because I spent literally the two or three minutes just saying, mm-hmm. to me, saying to him, are you okay if I do this? Mm-hmm. Because so many photographers just stick a lens in your face and you get like this sort of snarl and you go, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, but if you actually say, I'm doing this because it, A, it's for you because you'll get publicity mm. uh, and B, it's for me and also it's for your fans. You know, they want to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah. So, mm. so that's kind of, you know, that's, uh, that's my favourite my favorite shot. Um, and it's, again, it's knowing your artist. Yeah. The Obama one, have you seen the Obama pictures? They're brilliant. Mm. The guy spent weeks with him and didn't take a picture. Mm. And it's brilliant, you know. Yeah. He's got some really great shots. Mm. I wish, I wish years ago. I mean, uh, you know, I keep going back to Mark, but Mark sort of, you know, he, he only tiny knew David Bowie. But I wish I took a picture of David Bowie. Yeah, you know, and even the on, the, on his one man show, he, he says uh, about um, you know meeting Bowie. And Bowie took a copy of Viz magazine and took yeah, a he copy. Loved the Viz, didn't yeah, he? he loved the Viz, and it's like I would have loved to have taken that yeah. picture. I would have loved to sort of sat down and go. You're just a normal dude, aren't you? Yeah. You know, and now unfortunately we live in a world where David Bowie doesn't exist apart from his music. And the guy on Tesla, have you seen that? He's sticking the car in space playing oh, Space yeah, Oddity. Yeah, How yeah, mad yeah. is that? I mean, yeah. that's some that is some camera on that. My mm. God. Yeah. Mm. Right, but anyway, yeah. Well, cool. well, you've already mentioned that yeah. you've alluded to the charity, so we'd normally get to the point of the week where we talk the charity of the week to mm. highlight the charity that you have a yeah, yeah I'm, really, I'm really, really, really passionate about um, tinnitus because it does yeah. affect you know a lot of people. Mm. Um, you know, my brother uh, sometimes has a really low level it, but you know, one of my friends um, he, he suffered from it quite badly, and uh, I know a lot of people who suffer from it, who suffer from it, um, especially people you don't think would suffer from tinnitus, like your photographers. You know, like mm. you, like I know sound engineers wear wear cans and whatnot, yeah. um, but us lot like, sat in the pit, the speakers there, and you're yeah. moving across. So you, Blaming out, and so many people you speak to, 
in my game. And, and they're like, oh, just speak a little bit, I can't hear. I said, why is that? So I was sat in front of a speaker all night, you know, yeah. taking a picture, you know, uh, and DJs who suffer because they have the headphones on so loud, yeah. you know, and it really does, and it's incurable, you know. Like, yeah. I remember, you know, Craig uh, Gill from the Spirals, he, uh, you know, uh, used to watch a Glastonbury, he's played at Glastonbury many times and whatnot, and he suffered from it really, really heavily. Uh, so, you know, I am really passionate about that. And I think, you know, just, it's your ears, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone said to me the other day, said, "What would you rather lose, your eyesight or your ears?" And I went, "Wow, that's a tough. That that's is a fun. tough call because <laughs> I take pictures, but I also listen to music. Yeah. You know, I mean, that one, I won't have the other. So, uh, and I kind of picked my eyes. You know, I went, I went. Mm. Oh, I'd like to see something. You know what I mean? Mm. But then again, you know, you've seen a lot and you can imagine it, and you, you, you can hear a lot. So, yeah, it's quite a hard one. That it is a tough one. That one of each. Yeah. yeah, one of you. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I can't. Yeah. 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 Excellent. But yeah, so British Tinnitus, yeah, get supporting. Donate as much money as you can, it's a good cause. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, that's. Will, will do. Okay. An enormous amount of stuff in there. Yeah. There you go, take well, what you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. I we'll have it. Well, yes. So, I'm going to start with the difference between a mobile phone type photo Ooh. and a professional photo. Really? I've got that a little bit further on the list, but I'm happy to start right. there. Well, that, that's top of the pops for me. Um, okay, pop pick. That's good. Let's go. <laughs> so, mobile phone cameras are pretty good. Right? So, to yes. the to Joe Public like me, who knows very little about photography, mm-hmm. I can press a couple of buttons or even tap my screen a few times and I get what looks like a pretty good photo. Yes. When I was reflecting about this and it sort of came out in the, the interview, it does make... Or, or I kind of can understand the difference almost and probably do realise, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, that that is a photo that has been taken on a mobile phone versus that's a photo that's been taken professionally. Yeah. I'm having the same conversation at work at the minute about doing videos and buying decent kit for the videos because we're, we're doing something that needs videos. And I, if we're going to do it properly, might as well get the decent kit. Well, just use your phones. I said, yes, but when you... And Paul mentioned this. When you look at Facebook or Twitter, I would say... I don't know the figures, but I'm saying 9 out of 10 people look at it on their phone on the go. So a picture taken on another person's phone, on your phone, through a social media, is going to look fine. But as soon as you put it on a website or a printed document, you're right. You, I think you can... I don't think. I know you can see the difference straight away. Well, I think it's it's different, isn't it? I, I suppose that ties into the depends what you're using it for. Yeah. But even on an Instagram feed, if there's something that's been professionally taken and professionally edited, mm-hmm. which was the other bit, then... I do think you could put something side by side in a feed that you're looking at on a mobile phone oh, and realise oh, totally. that. Yeah, totally. Um, but I think if you had to just get some photos out there, you might just want to use your phone because it's quick and easy. But but then there's a question there of you just have to get some photos out there. Well, why would you just have to get some photos out there? I don't know. There could be many reasons. You'd, well, yeah. Well, I think that's the point, isn't it? It's, yeah, well, yeah. What are you taking photos for and... <laughs> What's the purpose behind why you're using them? Yeah, but the problem is of getting access to a good camera. I know we mentioned a four grand camera. That's not really... Um... Yeah, I don't think we were <laughs> ever going to invest no. £4,000 in anything, really. Let alone no. a, a camera being anywhere in the uh Possibly not, but I, 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 to- I, I totally agree with what he's saying about, about the different, the different uh, style of picture and the different quality of picture. And I think if you can get someone who has a good camera... To take your pictures, then definitely do it, because you will notice the difference. And if you are using it for print, well, I guess again, getting someone you know who happens to have spent a lot of money on a good camera that could be an awful photographer, maybe. Okay, yeah. But if you've got access to a good photo, whether that's a good photographer, a good camera, both or whatever, mm. I would definitely do mm. it, yeah. whether it costs money or not. Um, but it, that is another expense, and yeah, we'll spend. We'll talk about that a lot. But if you're, as we, as, um, one of the first things I wrote down, if you're going to send a pack off, so just to give a bit of context, we were seeing uh, fine lines at the Clooney who were supporting Merry Hell, and Paul knows that band, he knows the manager, and they gave him or us um, 
a pack, which is basically a here is Mary Hill, bit of bio, yeah, the picture, promo pack, the promo yeah. pack. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, and he's right. The the image on the front, it could have been a better image. So it's just something. Well, again, it depends used. what you're going for, isn't it? I'm, like Paul's point there was that there was no <laughs> pictures of the mm-hmm. the band themselves. So you don't know what they look like. You don't know who they are, what they're about, all the rest of it. I'd imagine other bands might want to go for that. They might want more of a image that represents them rather than their faces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But that image also needs to be good as well. And it's going to be committed to print because they're printing. My point was they're sending it off somewhere, aren't they? Someone's going to get it. And and if it's just sort of snap on your your phone. Yeah. But if you've never seen them before and you're receiving a promo pack cold almost... Then yeah, I sort of I, I totally take Paul's point that mm-hmm. you're probably going to want to know or see the the band what yeah. they look like, who they are. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's all well and good. And what are you saying about what kind of image you want and that thought process as well? Is it live? Is it rehearsal? Is it capturing the mood of the city they're from? Is it black and white? Is it other? Grumpy, what do you call them? Um, a, a moody indie band, all that sort of stuff you've got to think about, because in that picture you're selling a part of your story as well. No one mentioned the story a few times in previous episodes. That picture, as he said, a thousand words in the picture. Well, I loved the, the example he gave on the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah, where he said there's the one where you've got one person blurry, one person who's crisp, and mm-hmm. you can sort of. You know, vividly see the the person, and that conveys a lot about their differing personalities. Yeah. And like you say, it's that shot that can say a thousand words. Um, and again, I don't think that's anything that we would have given any thought to in the sense of right. We're well, we gonna some photos. How can we portray Ben's personality in this photo versus someone else's? Like. Well, the, Kev, to be fair to Kev, he tried to give it some thought. We had three attempts at pictures. We had four. One was just a quick one on the quayside, getting the Newcastle feel. One was by Danielle when we first started doing them at the first half. They were quite good. And then Kev did what? He, he tried to go for like a some kind of like field nature thing. Remember that? No, I, I do. I, I think... But you and in, Rob... Well, like naughty schoolboys. <laughs> that was part of the problem. I think in my mind, what we didn't do is talk to the photographer in this instance about it first. Yeah. They both had ideas, mm-hmm. but we didn't, and this is our bad, we didn't take the time to talk to them about it, let alone even begin the process of storyboarding out. Yeah. What we're actually going to... Yeah, that was good. I storyboarding what Paul mentioned. Yeah, that that time piece that of just taken... It would only have taken an hour, probably, to well, think about it. Because really, the two sets that we did, if you think about the two sets we did, regardless of the time ones and regardless of the ones Danielle did, we did ones in like the countryside. We weren't that type of band. We tried them in the inner city look for the third EP. Which was probably more our style, like the gritty, graffiti type walls and that. But at the time, everyone wanted to be the Arctic Monkeys, so everyone was doing gritty inner city urban pictures. But again, so, that's not new necessarily. That, I oh, mean, that's that, no, what I was saying. Is we we could have used time and time oh, again. No, that's, that's my point. We could have thought about it and said, well, shall we do something different? So when they get 10 pictures, all of, as um, Mark Radcliffe said, of singers with the guitar over the back, well, and then it's one samey, pops isn't up. It? Yeah, one pops up going. All right, because I was listening to a podcast with Ed Sheeran, and he was saying that he was going to a similar type of thing. He was going to um, acoustic night after acoustic night, busk night after busk night, and it was just the same person before him and after him. Yeah. So he started going to um, hip hop and rap battles, and there he is, a white ginger man. <laughs> he sticks out like a sore thumb, but he got he had to work the crowd. So that's a bit off topic, but one of my point is. It's stood out. different, isn't it? Yeah. Totally different. So if we had a did, if we had done pictures, I don't know, on a bouncy castle, no, I, it would have been. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I think that's a great, great point. Yeah, it would have been like, why are they people on a bouncy castle? This isn't the musical. It's got nothing to do with bouncy castles. 
But now I'm thinking about Bouncy Castles and these yeah. four lives on Bouncy Castles. Now the CD's in the CD player or the whatever. And all of a sudden, I'm interested, I'm engaged. Yeah. Rather than under an underpass. Well, again, a Bouncy Castle, the... it's fun, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's, there's certain connotations when you see someone on a Bouncy Castle that you think about certain things. <laughs> Get the Bouncy Castle, James. It was just popped in my head. No, I like it. <laughs> Well, anyone listening out there? I'd, I'd, quite like, bon- I'd quite like to go on a bouncy castle. Okay. I remember when we had one at first school and <laughs> there was a sponge football and whoever was in the bouncy castle was in goal. Oh, this is... All the fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, yes. But look how excited I am about that. <laughs> That's, well, yeah. that's the point. If it's just, there's another... And we've totally fell into this But that's trap. what I'm saying. We yeah. fell into the trap when we had... There's another photo of some people in front of a graffiti wall. I saw so what. Moody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I bet the play chords that sound like this. Bouncy castles, Ben. Bouncy castles. Vibrant colours. Mm. Maybe throw some paint in there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's it's been you... done. You've ruined it. I know. You've, you've got ruined to... it. Plus, you've got to give that bouncy castle back. I've, I've sucked, you know, from... You, you, you were there. I you had it. I had creative design, You brought the it? chips and you dropped them. Mm. Drop the chips, um, last thing but I anyway, think. yeah. That whole I know we just had a bit of a laugh about Bamsey Castles, but that whole thought process of right, this is what we were going to do. Why have we consciously thought that? Because all the bands that like that at the minute, yeah. so at the minute, if you didn't now, you'll probably get a lot, a lot of Ed Sheeran type acoustic guitars, one one lad or one girl with the guitar. You see them if, if you watch any of the talent, talent shows. A number of them pop on because that's what they think they want. And we did that battle of bands and everyone was doing Adele. And the year before, everyone was doing Lady Gaga. We did Dizzy Rascal and we stood out. Huh, it's because it. it was just different. Could we give it a little bit of thought? So these photos, again, if you're going to send them off to um, record companies, radio execs, if you're going to have a CDs, they still want to sell them in shops, doosh, 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 on a... On a, on a um, on a counter, and there's this bright bouncy castle one. Oh, that's interesting. They don't sound anything like what the picture is, but I'm very engaged in it. Well, it depends. You might if you're yeah. a poppy upbeat. If you're sort of like alpha beat, yeah, then yeah, bouncy castles all the way. <clears throat> definitely. Mm. But um, my point is, yeah, definitely just giving that a bit of thought process about what you want to, what you want the picture to say, what you want it to do, what's it for, is it for print, is it for internet. Is it just for your Facebook? Because sometimes an iPhone picture might work, or yeah. it might work just as well. Um, and I would do a combination of both. If you had like, if you just got people bouncing on bouncy castle, you've got your professional ones, then just snap a couple with your phone. Well, this ties <coughs> into, well, sort of ties into one of the points that I really liked that Paul was saying. If he takes a whole host of of images, and someone's like, "Oh, that's the best one. That's the one I'm going to use," and you'll say, "No." You're not using that one. We're going to keep that one back for a couple of years. Yeah. But I, mm, I'd never really given much thought to, right, we'll, we'll hold that back and we'll use the next one. It was sort of a bit at odds. If I, if I take that into the song sort of world, mm-hmm. would you keep a great song back until later? Like, if you take the Mark Radcliffe sort of approach, yeah. put your best, um, your best song first. Don't open. pit the friends against each other, James. O- open. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was different. Yeah, yeah. Di- different Horse sort of courses. views. Yeah, Mark was like, put your best song first on the CD. Play your best uh, song first live. Um, you know, give it your best shot first was sort of his ethos. Whereas Paul's sort of looking at it a bit more canny and thinking, hmm, use a good photo. In fact, use a very good photo. Mm. But maybe if you've got take a whole host of photos and there's like 20, 30, 40 photos you really like. Maybe use, yeah. your, use, use your second best photo, not your best one. Well, it was an interesting uh, take on. One of the things we kind of spoke about, but it was something I thought about afterwards more, and it ties in with, with Danielle who took our first photos, is, and similar to the tour manager. Mm. So... Tour managers we spoke about maybe being your friends or someone you knew, someone you trusted. That could be the fifth or fourth or sixth member of the band. If you have a friend who does photography or you don't, but you live near a university, there's plenty of students that do photography and I can bet any money in my pocket against any money in your pocket that someone wants to do photos of bands. They're interested in music. 
just tap them up. Do you fancy taking some pictures for us? It's free, it's it's exposure for the person, and it's free for us. Um, mm. And if one of the other do pretty well, I'm a uni student, and this band have just been on Radio 1, and I took their first pictures, or whatever radio station. Likewise, this photographer has just done a, this show because they've taken pictures of a band. They did ours as well. So, yeah. I think using... It's almost like using free resources. If you're lucky enough to have someone like Danielle, like we did, who can take your picture, brilliant, use them. If not, there will be someone not too far away that can, either for free or for not not a lot of money. Yeah, and and use the fact that you know them when you're doing the shoot as mm-hmm. well. I mean, when Paul was saying, you know, the the fact whether it's like a, a Noel or a Manny or whoever would sort of give them a nod or a wink or a smile or whatever when on stage. So there's that connection which changes the type of photo that you get. Yeah. Um, and sort of go into it with a mindset of, right, we're getting some photos done. And mm-hmm. You want a good outcome. Yeah. And, you know, working with the the photographer, I guess. Yeah, and I think... Rather than against them, which I think probably at times... And I think if you've got someone like a, a strong opinion on what you want, that's great to have that conversation. But also, if it's a professional photographer, let them do their work because they've probably had the moody singer in, and as, as he said, the mm-hmm. uh, moody singer in a million times. You go, like, that's not going to work, trust us. But if, you, if you're going to be a yeah. what, what about it, I'll, I'll, I'll just take your money. It's well, that was, that was one of the things Paul said. One of the things that winds them up most about bands is, I, I think he said something like, they don't have a clue, as in they, they come to the table and they've not given any thought whatsoever yeah. as to what it is that they're after. And therefore, it could be that he'll just make something up which may or may not be of, of any use to them. Yeah. So Definitely. And that also, one of the things he said was, listen to them, like, as the photographer, listen to their music. And I know I spoke about that a little bit, about the moody guitar band or whatever, or the, the Smiths we use as an example of what they want to try and get out of it. But yeah, the right, the, the music will kind of guide you what they want to do. And that little bit of change up the yeah. bouncy castle. But <laughs> and that's what you were saying. You can be sympathetic to the past, but don't just replicate it and copy it completely. Yeah. Um, so again, he was like any number of bands who've, who will have been photo, photographed outside the Salford Lads Club because that's what the Smiths did. It's like, well, what, how do you be, sort of give that a nod maybe, but you don't just copy it completely. So, good cause of the week. Yes. Now this is quite a apt one. Yeah, because again, this is something that known about for ages, but I'd probably only really thought about it in the context of the musician, yes. not the sound guy, the photographers, the everyone else who's... Security guards at the front. Yeah, that close to big massive speakers constantly and if you're in a band as well a lot of people who are like at least academy uni size will have earpieces in so it's blocking a lot of it out mm. and I suppose the photographers will still put their buds in and that but they are right next they're in front of the amps whereas the, the band are normally behind the amps to a certain extent I suppose you've got the ones on stage but the big boomers yeah. are right in your face so well and like it says it music, doesn't go ears, away nah, <laughs> no music ears Pretty critical. Kind of come hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so yes, we'll put links on for what Paul was talking about and definitely something to read up on. Because I bet there's some prevention type stuff out there as well. Or as best it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Coming up next week, we're at the Cumberland Arms in Newcastle with singer-songwriter Willie Mason, where we discuss intimate venues, songwriting, recording and building relationships. We've reached the end of this week's episode of Anyone Can Play Guitar Podcast. Big thank you for tuning in and remember to stop by iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. While you're there, it would be amazing if you could leave a rating and a review. All the show notes can be found at www.acpgmusic.com and if you want to get in touch, email us your questions, any feedback and any suggestions to info at acpgmusic.com That's it for now. 
keep supporting upcoming artists. And we'll catch you next time.